Welcome back to our channel here at Vagabond Builds with James and Sandu. And today we're bringing another walk around in depth review video of the all new newly redesigned 2024 Chevrolet Traverse. Now this is in the one FL trim. We're going to be talking about exterior, interior and specs on this exact car. What's new and showing you guys all about it. But before we start, a thanks and a special shout out to Roseville Chevrolet here at the Roseville Auto Mall in Roseville, California for providing us this beautiful uh, car for this walk around review. And keep watching, stay tuned. We're also gonna be talking about the price tag that this is coming in at and also dropping that MSRP sticker. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's dive in and talk specs. But before we even start the specs, I wanted to mention that this is well, a sub model of the LS, let's just say you got four trims. It's a LS, LT, Z71, and a RS. So four trims in the new 2024 Traverse, but this is a 1FL. It's kind of a sub model from the LS. So don't get confused on that as well, okay? But what do we get with regards to the specs on the new 2024 Chevrolet Traverse? This being the 1FL, standard does not matter what trim you get. It comes with a 2.5 liter four cylinder turbocharged dual overhead cam engine paired together with the eight speed automatic transmission pushing 328 horsepower with 326 pounds feet of torque. MPG is 20 city, 27 highway and 23 combined with a 19.4 gallon gas tank size. Dimensions on the new Chevrolet Traverse is 205 inches in length, 80 inches in width, 70 inches in height with a 7.5 inch ground clearance. Now, if you do have the Z71 trim, which is more of the off-road kind of rugged trim, you get about a 1.2 inch higher ground clearance and a max towing capacity of about 5,000 pounds, everybody. Now, I like to ask my viewers, what do you guys think about getting rid of the 3.6 liter V6 naturally aspirated in 2023 and shooting towards the 2.5 liter in the four cylinder turbocharged. Now, I know, I know, I know. I'm a fan, if you guys have been watching my reviews, I'm a fan of the naturally aspirated, but we see majority of all manufacturers shooting over to the turbocharged systems. Why? Because it's the new green deal or whatever. So thank our fierce leaders for that. Um, Again, what do you guys think? How long is it gonna last? Leave in the comment section below. Let's dialogue. I like viewers to kind of put in their inputs and perspectives of the new engine or powertrain coming in. Now, you have the option of getting a front wheel drive or all wheel drive in the 2024 Traverse. We left the lights on. This is a daytime running light, but if you do not have the headlight on, you will have a brighter daytime running light here along with your signal lights and hazards. Dropping down to the LED, or the xenon bulbs there with matte black plastic trim and an active air vent there as well. Coming over to the center of the car, we have a front 360 panoramic view. So you do have a high tech standard on these 2024 traverses in which we did not see in the 2023s. You're getting a whole lot more tech kind of as a standard feature. This being a lower trim, you're still getting the 360 panoramic um, surround view camera. You get the golden Chevy bow tie, matte black plastic on the grills up top in the mid and lower down there as well. No parking sensors in the front if you'd like to know that as well. This exterior paint color is a sterling gray metallic exterior paint color. Wanted to also point out that the uh, wheel well trims are matte black plastic. If you do have the higher trim like the RS, you will have a painted matte black plastic trim dropping down to the wheel area. Again, keep an eye out for the premium rims. This being a lower trim rim, you have a gunmetal gray machine surface silver color with the Bridgestone Alenzas and it's a 255, 65, 18. So you got an 18 inch Suspension system is a shock spring strut suspension, standard suspension system as well, okay? Moving forward, chrome trim going around the uh, windows with matte black plastic on the lower side, integrated blinker lighting with the high gloss black on top, matte black plastic on the bottom with the 360 panoramic camera. Traverse coming across that front door and check out the body lines. I have to mention that this whole car itself is just a whole lot better looking. It's a boxier, more aggressive look. I'm a fan. We do see, if you guys have been seeing my other reviews, 
We do see manufacturers shooting over to the more kind of rugged boxer look on the car, same as Porsche and many others, okay? But I'm a fan of this one, if you ask me some vagabond advice. Um, this is a whole lot better looking. No offense to the ones who have the older body style. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but again, this is just a better looking uh, midsize SUV from the last one, okay? Got the integrated uh, lock button, all right? Coming down, just wanna show you guys how big and wide you open up these doors. Just a lot of space coming into that. We do see a lot of midsize SUVs. You can't even open up that door that wide, okay? It's your gas tank right here. You have no cap for that gas tank. That is very convenient. Shooting over to the rear end, nice back glass for that quarter panel. Up top, we got a spoiler with the integrated brake lighting, privacy glass in the back, wiper for that back glass, high gloss black trim going across those LED tail lights. And right under, we get a 360 camera with the backup camera and the washer for that camera. Oh, yeah. Dropping down, traverse, bumper sensors here in the back, matte black plastic. You'd have to remove this cap for the tow. And then you have the two tip exhaust on each side. There you go. And we do not have a spare tire under the car, which that means we're gonna have it on the inside. So let's go ahead and pop open the cargo. Electric assist, very nice for a lower trim. And this is what we get on the three row SUV. Let's go ahead and talk cargo space. So if we go ahead and have second and third row seat up, we're gonna have about 23 cubic feet of space. If we drop the third and the second row seat, we have about 98 cubic feet of space, which I have to say, this is pretty much the leading amount of size in a midsize SUV uh, within its class here on the Chevy Traverse. We go ahead and pull that, drop those. Let's just go ahead and show you guys what it looks like. All right, and then we could go ahead and drop those. But if you do have a higher trim, I'd like to mention, like the RS, you'd have an electric panel here that you actually control those electrically instead of manually. 12 volt outlet with some tie downs. And what do we get under this mat? Some more cargo. And we'd have to lift this up. But I gotta check if there's a spare tire on that. There is a spare tire under this as well. You can see the signs there but you'd have to move these. So the spare tire is under there. If you guys can see it, there you go. All right, and then dropping this down, back into play. All right, and we're gonna put the caps on later. Let's go ahead and close this. Electric control. Now that we're done talking about specs, exterior and cargo, let's go ahead and talk interior. So get a load of this new design traverse on the interior guys. I have to mention, it just looks a whole lot more sleek and a better design inside the 2024 traverse. Get a load of that 17.7 inch infotainment screen. Phenomenal. And then it kind of just branches out from the fully digital cluster. I have to say Chevrolet did a good job on this 2024 Traverse, but let's go ahead and bring this trim over to you guys. The one FL trim starting with the door panel. All right. We got the hyper silver handle, the kind of uh, matte gray look controls to your windows and side mirrors unlock lock button with your tailgate lift button down here with some more cubby room and a cup holder. On the left-hand side of that manual steering column, we have a parking brake button, your drive modes. You get three drive modes in this. And once I go ahead and press that drive mode, I'm gonna show you guys on the infotainment screen what it looks like. You actually get a super cool interface, very nice, clean look on the interface. Snow, ice, sport, and normal. And then you can turn off the automatic on and off engine start stop button with your knob to your lighting for your dashboard. On the left, hand side of that manual steering column we have the controls to your signal lights windshield wipers and then a paddle shifter for that eight speed automatic transmission downshift upshift on the right with your parking modes okay parking reverse neutral drive is here you're going to pull towards you goes into neutral pull towards you and drop down goes into drive and then we could go ahead and press that button and press it into park. Love that feature. Something's going on here, heated steering wheel. We could actually change that cluster, different modes. If you're feeling like the Google uh, map, we're in, we're in demo mode now, so you're not going to get that full Google map. Then we go ahead and give it into the crash warning map there with your miles per hour gauge on the left. And then if we go ahead and give it more of the simplistic, more modern feel, 
a cluster look and then we go back to its normal. So up to four options on that. You have your um, cruise control as well as you can have voice activated Google Assist, okay? You have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Alexa built-in with the Google system, as I mentioned, and I just wanna show you guys that, what it looks like. This is a split screen. Let's go ahead and show you guys what a full screen looks like. Huge, awesome look. Okay, and then we can connect our phones and so forth. Here is our lighting button. All right, there goes your touch sensitive for your headlights, tail lights, and then your lane departure assist system. All right, and so forth. Heated seats, no cooled seats in the one FL. The higher trims do get the cooled seats. You got the temperature controls for your vent, touch sensitive and also uh, touch sensitive on the temperature as well as syncing them. You can actually uh, put them to where they actually flow together or if you don't want them to flow together, you could actually change the temperature on each side. Dropping down, you also have a hard button um, control unit here. So not just touch sensitive, but you're getting the hard buttons so you can control the vents here as well, all right? These are your knobs for your temperatures as well, not just the screen, but also on your hard knobs. USB-C, USB-A plug-in with a 12 volt outlet. You do not have a wireless charging pad in the one FL trim. Cup holders, nice and big, American big, love the cup holders. This is your new key fob, all right? To your Chevy Traverse. Pop this, some more cubby room. You got the high gloss with the silver looking good and classy. Removable tray, a lot of room for that center console. The seats themselves do come uh, power adjustable on the driver's seat, eight-way adjustable, and then manual adjustments on the passenger. With In front of the passenger, we have a non-lockable glove compartment, okay? Now, this, seat does, this car does seat up to eight passengers, so you get three in the back, three in the second row, and then two in the front, so mid-size with eight passengers, phenomenal, okay? Up top, we have the OnStar button, very nice and safe SOS with the hazards button up top and a straight to the point simple rear view mirror. No top glass guys, lower trims, no top glass, higher trims you get that top glass and we're gonna show you guys or check out our video with regards to the RS trim review. We're done with the front side, let's go ahead and show you the second row and the third row of this all redesigned Traverse. All right, everybody, second row seating. All right, we still have that cloth. This is the jet black cloth back here. No armrest, okay, on the 60 percenter of the driver's side of the second row bench seating. No armrest or no cup holders back here on this bench. You get a 40 percenter, but your cup holders are placed right in front of you. I like this idea better, but it'd still be nice to have the armrest option. In front of us, pockets on the back of those two front seats. In between that, we have the tri-zone climate control. So you get the dual in the front and then the third one here in the back. They're just hard knob controls, your temperature as well. Dropping down to USB-C plugins with your inverter. If you wanna bring an air fryer or a blow dryer, you can do it and then some more cubby room. Ways to control this seat, okay? You have a few ways. You have this lever here in the front as usual to move this seat front and back. You got a lever to drop the backrest or to increase the angle, or you can bunny hop this seat right here and pull this seat forward, which opens up to the third row seating. Now I'm about six feet, two inches, everybody. So in comparison, hopefully this helps you out in the video. I got a lot of room in the front, a lot of room in the uh, second row area. I'm gonna shoot over to the third row real quick. Finishing off with this, you got your reading lights up top and then your air vents here right over. Now, what do you guys feel about these air vents? I'm a fan of these air vents, honestly, because it's just very nicely placed. A lot of times we'll see them on the uh, B pillars, maybe here on the left, but I kind of like this idea right in front of you better. Now, let's go ahead and pop this seat forward. I'm gonna keep this seat in the standard position. And yes, it's a midsize, but get a load of the seating system here. Now you can fit up to three. I know it'll be kind of crunched back here, but if I open up my legs, two can fit back here very well. You'd have to put the kiddos in the back to get actually a good three. But if the kids are back here, phenomenal space because my legs are touching. They are touching the uh, back of that second row seating. You could also move the second row seating up and increase your leg room. But head clearance is completely there a few inches up top 
We have the air vents back here as well for the third row passengers, maybe your animals, that they're not feeling all claustrophobic. On the right and the left, what do we get? We get one USB-C plug-in with some more cubby room and a cup holder here as well. So nobody's left out with charging their iPads, telephones, or whatnot. Now, as promised, here's the MSRP sticker. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section below. Is it worth the price tag on this car? Let me know if you'd like to see other things. Dialogue with us. We'd like our viewers to actually drop some comments in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching our channel here at Vagabond Builds with James and Sandu. Thank you and God bless.